Okay, let me discuss this problem. So this says we have a rectangular frame A B C D. So we have a rectangular frame A B C D, and this rectangular frame is made up of a metal wire, and there is a straight connection between E and F. So we have a straight connection between E and F, and A E F D this is basically a square. So A E F D is a square and having a side of one meter length. And the length EB is equals to FC, that is 0.5 meter. So what we have? So let me make this one. So we have this length. This length is 1 meter, and this length is basically 0.5 meter. That is given to you. Are you getting? And now this is a square, so this length has to be 1 meter. So this length is again 1 meter. Now the question says the entire loop is placed in a magnetic field and magnetic field is increasing and the rate of increase is given to you that is 1 tesla per second so basically db by dt that is increase in magnetic field with time that is 1 tesla per second that is given to you and now each bar has a resistance and resistance per unit length is given to you lambda so lambda is 1 ohm per meter that is also given to you Now you have to calculate what is the current in the segment AE, BE, and EF. So this segment AE, BE, and EF. So we have to find current in these three segments. Now how will you proceed? Let me make the diagram again so that things becomes easy because I have to write Kirchhoff equations. So let us say. and this is my loop and this is point and there is a connector this is connected by this wire so this point is point a this is b this is c this is d and this is e and this is f this length is 1 meter this is point 5 meter and this length is again 1 meter Now you see what will happen if there is a increase in magnetic field through this region. There is also increase in magnetic field through this region. What will happen if you increase the magnetic field? There will be induced EMF. And now Lenz's law says something about direction of current. So they say if you are increasing a current in this loop, if you are increasing magnetic field in this loop, there will be current in this loop and that will try to decrease the increase are you getting also you see there is increase in the downward direction there is the inside the plane of figure so there will be a current that will generate a outward so if you have something like this so in this circuit if you have a current something like this you can press your thumb rule so let us say you can put the fingers in this way so your thumb will come outside so this will give you the direction so this means in this circuit i will have a current something like this are you getting or not let us say call this current is i1 now this has to has if i complete this one so this has to have something like this now there will be again induced emf in this loop now again i have to have a direction of current so that there is a decrease in magnetic field and this is possible only if there is a current in this loop something like this are you getting or not and this means i have to have in this section current in this way in this section current in this way in this section current in this way and in this section current in the this way are you getting or not so this is let us call this current is i2 so what is the current in this section in this section there is a current i1 in the upper direction there is a current downward direction i2 so i can say in the upper direction total current is I1 minus I2. Are you getting or not? So let me draw the figure again so that things becomes easy. So I have this loop. So easy. Let us find this one. So I have this loop again. So let me make this. So I have this loop. Now there is a loop. This loop is basically A, B, C. d now there is a current in this loop something like this this is your i1 and in this loop we have a current i2 
So, this is I2. What is the total current in this loop? So, in this loop you will have I1 up and I2 down. So, I can say I1 minus I2 up. So, this is I1 minus I2 that is up. Are you getting or not? Now, we can write flux in loop 1, we can write flux in loop 2. So, let us call this as loop number 1 and for me this is loop number 2. So, let us calculate flux in loop 1. So, phi 1 I can calculate. So, let us say phi 1 that is V dot ds and area vector is perpendicular. So, B is I know. So, B and what is ds? ds is this length is 1 meter. This length is again 1 meter. So, this is simply 1 into 1. This is your area vector. So, this is simply becomes B. Now, what is d phi by dt? That will give you in this DMF in this loop. So, d phi 1 divided by dt is simply dv by dt. And dv by dt I know that is the value of SI unit is 1. So, this becomes d phi 1 by dt is 1. So, this means in this loop I have a EMF of 1 volt. So, this is 1 volt. Now, calculate loop number 2. So, phi 2 that is b dot ds again and this time b is how much? b is same and ds is this length is 0 0.5. This length is 1. So, this is 0 0.5. This is 0 0.5. So, b times 0 0.5. So, this is b into 0 0.5. Are you getting? So, d phi 2 by dt. So, d phi 2 by dt. So, this is equals to 0 0.5 times dv by dt. And dv by dt is 1. So, this is becomes 0 0.5 volt. So, this is 0 0.5 volt. So, you see this is in the loop number 1 and this is in the loop number 2. Now, I can write equation. So, if you see this equation in this loop, what is the total EMF? And this loop total EMF is 1 volt. So, I can write V is equals to IR. So, 1 volt is the total EMF. What is the total IR? So, I can write this all are current. So, this is the direction of EMF. So, this is my direction of EMF. So, anything in the direction of EMF will be basically I have to take positive. So, I will have V is equals to I R. So, I 1 minus I 2 and the current is R is 1 ohm per meter and length is 1 ohm. So, this is 1 meter. So, this is 1 ohm. This is again another 1 ohm, another 1 ohm, another 1 ohm. So, 4 ohm. Are you getting or not? So, this is 1 ohm. So, I can write 1 into I 1 minus I 2. V is equals to 1 into I 1 minus I 2 plus in this side you will have 1 into current is I1. So, in this case you will have this end is your E and this end is your F. So, in this case you will have 1 into length is 1 and this current is I1. So, this is plus 1 into I1. Now, plus this is again 1 and current is I1. So, 1 into I1. Now, in this loop what you have again 1 and the current is I1. Are you getting? So, this is again 1 into I1. So, 1 into I1. So, what is this total value? So, 1 volt is equals to I1 1 plus 1 2 plus 3 plus 4. So, you will have 4 I1 minus I2. So, this is the equation number. Let us call this is equation number 3. Now, let us write in this equation. So, EMF is produced in this way. Are you getting or not? So, in this loop again EMF direction is this and this is the 0.5 volt. So, I can write V is equals to I R. So, 0 0.5 volt is equals to I R. Now, this direction, this current is I 2, this current is I 2 and the resistance is 0.5 and this is 1 and this is 1. So, this is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 1 plus 1 2, 2 I 2. I can write 2 I 2. So, this is 2 I 2. Are you getting or not? And now in this case, I am going opposite. So, if I am going from this direction, the current is opposite. So, I have to basically subtract and the resistance is 1. So, 1 into I1 minus I2, I have to subtract. Are you getting or not? Because current is in this direction and the EMF is in this direction. So, I am going opposite. So, current direction is reverse of EMF direction. So, they, this means I have to basically subtract 1, min, 1 into I1 minus I2. So, this is minus 1 into I1 minus I2. 
If you would have written the equation equals to v1 minus v2, in that case what you have done, in that case you have to have add this one. Are you getting or not? So, if you start from here and let us say you put a battery here, in that case you have to subtract. But if you write in the whole equation v is equals to i r, in that case you have to subtract because you are going away from the current direction, away from the e wave direction. So, now this becomes 0 0.5 volt is equals to 2 i 2 and plus i 2. So, this is 3 i 2 minus i 1. Now, if I multiply by 2, uh, I have to solve for i 1, i 2. So, this is equation number 4. Let us say how can I do? So, let us multiply equation number 4 by 4. So, multiply equation number 4 by 4 and then add with equation 3 and add to equation number 3. So, this is an easy one. So, if you add with this, you will have 1 is equals to 4 i 1 minus i 2 and this is 4. So, it will become 2 is equals to 4 into 3 12, 12 i 2 minus 4 i 1. So, if you add this to equation, this is easy and this becomes 11 i 2. So, 11 i 2 is equals to 2 plus 1 3. So, this means i 2 is 3 by 11 simple. So, this means i 2 is 3 by 11 and this will be an SI unit that is ampere. Are you getting or not? Similarly, I can calculate i 1. So, easy to find i 1. Are you getting or not? So, let us calculate i 1. So, if you plug in this equation either 1 or 2. So, let us plug in this equation equation number 4 or let us plug in this equation. You have 1 is equals to 4 i 1 minus i 2. So, you will have 1 plus i 2 divided by 4 that will give you i 1. So, 1 plus i 2, i 2 is 3 by 11 and this divided by 4. Are you getting or not? This divided by 4. So, you will have 11 plus 3, 14, 14 divided by, so this is 14 divided by 4 into 11. Are you getting? So, this becomes this is equals to 7 by 2 and to 11, 7 by 22. Are you getting? So, this is again in ampere. Now, we can find current in the middle wire E F. So, this I 1, I 2, I know the corresponding wire. And now, in the middle wire, what is the current? I 1 minus I 2. So, let us calculate current in E F. So, we have to find also current in E F current in EF. This is easy. This is basically nothing but I1 minus I2 and I1 I know that is 7 by 22. So, this is 7 divided by 22 and this is what is I2. So, let us say I2 is 3 by 11. So, if you subtract this to 3 by 11. So, this becomes 22. So, 7 minus 6 are you getting or not? So, this is 1 by 22. So, I can write, so this is 1 divided by 22 ampere.